everyone. How's it going? Man, long time no see. I'm so glad I get to see you here today on Kid Zone Online. Uh, today, I want to share with you a story, an amazing story of how God took the Israelites from one side to the other side. Yes, we're going to talk about walls and what they mean to us and how God can help us to tear down these walls. So come on with me as we talk about Jericho. Oh man, I am so excited to be here at church with you today. We're gonna to be doing something new for the next couple weeks called Kid Zone Online. And I want you to tell all your friends about Kid Zone Online so they can join in on the awesome excitement going on here in your church. Uh, just because you're at home doesn't mean that we can't worship God. So let's worship God together, shall we? We're going to start off with a word of prayer because it's important to talk to God as much as we can. So let's pray. Dear God, we're so thankful that we can come here to church in our own homes, maybe in our pajamas or in our shorts or in our, in our, in our tuxedos, maybe. Who knows what we're doing at home? But we want to come and we want to give you glory for everything that we have. And we thank you for this time that we get to share together. In Jesus' name we pray, everyone said, Amen! All right, today, like I said, when you guys woke me up there, we're going to talk about Jericho. Now, if you remember in the Bible, Jericho was a, a town that was surrounded by a huge wall. But it was in a land that God had promised to the Israelites. So we're going to talk about how the Israelites came upon this town and how God helped them conquer it through his power and through their faith. So let's dive right into the story here today. Uh, we're going to be reading out of our Bible from Joshua chapter 6. Joshua chapter 6. And I'll have, I'm going to read you a little bit of a story. There's going to be some pictures on the screen here. So let's read the story together. Israel came closer to their promised land. As they camped overlooking the fertile land of their soon-to-be home, God showed them the strong city of Jericho. It was a fortified city with big, thick walls that prevented enemy soldiers from coming in and capturing them. For Israel to take possession of the land, this city had to be destroyed. God raised up a strong and courageous leader named Joshua to take charge of the people of Israel and lead them into the promised land. Joshua sent two spies to scout out the land and the city. While in the city, the spies were almost captured, but a woman named Rahab hid them from the soldiers. The spies reported back to Joshua and gave him information that could help them plan their attack. Now God spoke to Joshua and told him how to conquer Jericho. God instructed Joshua to have the soldiers and priests line up and march around the walls of Jericho. First in line would be the armed men, followed by the priests, blowing their trumpets and carrying the Ark of the Covenant. And another guard of soldiers would bring up the rear. All of these people were to march around the walls of Jericho once a day for six days. The trumpets would blow, but the people were not to say a single word. They had to shh, be quiet. Then on the seventh day, they were to march around the city seven times. And on Joshua's signal, they would shout as loud as they could. On the morning of the seventh day, Joshua, the army, and the priests, and the people did exactly what the Lord commanded them to do. On the seventh circle around the city, Joshua gave the signal, and the people erupted in shouts. Their yelling was met with huge rumble as the city walls of Jericho began to break apart and tumble down. The massive stone fortress crumbled before their eyes, and Joshua and his army were able to capture the city and destroy everything in it. They burned the city to the ground, but they kept all the gold and all the silver and placed it into the treasury for the Lord. As promised, 
They spared the lives of Rahab and her family. Once again, God gave the Israelites a victory. A curse was placed on the city, and to this day, the walls of Jericho could never be rebuilt. So, we just talked about how the Israelites were faithful in listening to God's rules and instructions to take the city of Jericho. Now, to be honest, those rules may have sounded pretty silly to the Israelites at the time, but sometimes we don't understand God's plans, and we need to be obedient to follow them when he gives them to us. It kind of reminds me about how right now we're all sitting in home, or we're sitting uh, away from where we normally are to keep ourselves isolated from others. Why we're washing our hands a lot and using hand sanitizer and keeping our distance from other people. Well, just like the Israelites had to listen to God, we need to listen to the authorities that God has put over us because they are there to give us instruction on how to live. Now, ultimately, we know that God is in control of this situation. Just like the Israelites knew that God was in control of their destiny as they looked over Jericho and that huge wall. Now, I'm sure some of them felt doubt, and I'm sure some of them were kind of confused why they weren't just storming the wall and taking it by force. But God wanted to know just how obedient they were. God wanted to see just how strong their faith was. And I think that's how we need to feel right now. How strong is your faith in God right now? Do you believe that he has this situation under control? I know I do. And I take advantage of the time that we have been given to use to give it to him. I spend more time reading uh, my Bible. I spend more time with my family playing games and doing devotions. What are you doing with your time at home? Why don't you share with your mom or dad, or maybe call up your grandma and grandpa and tell them what you're doing at home to keep busy in these times of uh, seclusion. So right now, I want to do just a little bit of an art project here. So what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to ask your mom and dad's permission for uh, a scissors, and then go and find yourself some crayons and some tape and uh, some construction paper. So why don't you come along with me right now and we'll get ready to do this project, okay? Let's go. Hey, all right, so like I said, we're gonna do a little art project together. And today we're gonna be making a trumpet. Now you may be asking yourself, why are we making a trumpet? Well, after the seventh time around on the seventh day, the God commanded the Israelites to shout and the uh, priests to blow their trumpets as loud as they could. And then it's after that, that the wall came tumbling down. So let's make a trumpet together, shall we? Uh, so what you're gonna need is some paper, construction paper, white paper, whatever you want. Uh, you're gonna need some crayons or markers, some tape, and don't forget to ask your mom's permission for the scissors, okay? And don't run with scissors, it's just a bad idea. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and Okay, you know what? We don't need the scissors. So we're going to put the scissors off to the side, okay? Uh, we're not going to need them. But you are going to need the paper and the crayons and the, the tape. So what I first want you to do is I want you to take your crayons. On, and on your paper, I want you to draw a wall, okay? So let's, let's kind of build a wall together. This is going to be uh, looking like the wall of Jericho, but it could be any wall that you're facing in your life right now. Maybe it's the wall of your house, and you're like, I want to be on the other side! So you can draw maybe the house uh, that you're living in, or maybe it's your room because you uh, were naughty too much, and then you got grounded and you have to go to your room. So whatever wall it is that you're facing, I want you to draw it, okay? Uh, so let's take some time and draw a wall together. Because this wall is what separates us from where we are now to where we need to be. So here's my wall. It's so pretty, don't you think? 
I am such an awesome drawer. So, uh, whatever your wall may be, I want you to draw it on your paper. And then what I want you to do is I want you to roll the paper up. And what we're going to do is make a trumpet, okay? Uh, so it doesn't have to be perfect uh, because since I'm doing it, it's never going to be perfect. Uh, but we take and roll it up and then we're going to tape it into a trumpet. There we go. That's going to be an awesome trumpet. Do this right here. All right. Okay, so I got my trumpet. Now let's go back and talk about the story. But don't break this and don't lose it because we're going to need it later for God's plan. Okay? Let's see you over there. Okay, all right. All right, so now we have our trumpets built. It's time to talk about the story because it's good to talk about what we've learned today. So, first thing I want to talk about is I got a question for you. What was the name of the city the Israelites were trying to conquer? Does anyone know? Yes, you. Right! It was called Jericho. Jericho was the name of the city that the Israelites were told by God that they could conquer. Right. Now, let's imagine, hmm, let's imagine, close your eyes, that we're at school, okay? And we're in the middle of an epic food fight. How many of you have been in an epic food fight? Yes. We've all been in an awesome food fight. Uh, no, that's not a good idea. Don't do it at school when you go back, okay? Because uh, Mr. Leek's going to be calling me and he's going to be like, uh, Pastor Wes, why did you tell him they can have a food fight? Like, it wasn't me, it was the unicorn. But no, we're going to be... So let's imagine you're in an epic food fight, okay? Would you be hiding in the middle of the room or behind a table when this food fight is going on? Let's think about that for a second. Uh, yeah, right. We're going to want to be standing behind the table because if we were standing in the middle of the room, we would get messy, right? Uh, we would be like the target of everyone's mashed potatoes and gravy. No, we'd be an easy target. Uh, up against the wall or behind the table is going to be a good place to hide. It'd be a good place of cover. Now, during biblical times of the Israelites right now, most cities built a wall around them to protect them from the enemies. Now, this helped the people protect themselves and to protect them from invasions from other people. Without the walls, the cities were left exposed and they could have been attacked really easy and taken over by the enemy. So that's why walls were important back in biblical times. Now, let's think about what happened to the people when they were marching around Jericho and began to shout. What happened after they shouted on the seventh day after the seventh time? Uh, yes, you. Right! The wall came tumbling down, right? They felt a great earthquake, and the walls came tumbling down. Now, I got a question for you to imagine. Um, I want to tell you a secret, okay? It's, it's a, one of my most favorite cooking secrets. So, the best way to make macaroni and cheese is to put the box, I mean the whole box, on top of the table and stomp on it, okay? That's how you make awesome macaroni and cheese. And after you stomp on it, you dance around it for five minutes, and then you shout, macaroni and cheese! Does that sound right? <laughs> no, that's not how you make macaroni and cheese. But, this is completely nuts. There is no possible way that after doing that to your macaroni and cheese, it's gonna be edible. But, the instructions don't have to make sense that God give us. God gives us instructions to where sometimes we don't understand. Sometimes they don't make sense to us, but you know what? God knows what he's doing. He created the whole universe around us. He knows how to protect us. He knows how to keep us safe. One more question I wanna ask you is, um, the Israelites, when they came into Jericho, after the walls came tumbling down, everything was destroyed except for who? Does anyone remember who was protected while the wall came tumbling down? Yes, you were the way back on the recliner. Yes, right, it was Rahab and her family. 
right. Rahab and her family were protected. You know why? Because God promised that she would be protected. She helped the Israelites by giving them important information and keeping the spies safe. So God kept his promise and protected Rahab and her, and her family. The only reason the walls around Jericho fell was because God made it happen. In fact, God did not need the Israelites to march around there, be quiet, and then all of a sudden blow their trumpets. No, he didn't need any of that. But he wanted to test their faith. He wanted to test to see if they would follow his instructions. They had the faith that God had a plan for them marching around the city. And that plan was for them to overtake it through his power and not theirs. So, um, as we uh, begin to conclude here, I want to ask you a couple questions here. I want to talk about something that you can talk about with your parents. You can talk about with your mom, your dad, aunt and uncle. Call your grandma and grandpa up. Don't forget about them. And ask them and tell them what you learned about today. Sometimes we face obstacles in our lives. And they may seem like a big wall surrounding us. Now, this victory that was recorded in the Bible shows us that God's great power can still serve as an encouragement to us today. The God who brought down the wall of Jericho is the same God who wants to help us in these times of trouble right now. God wants to help you. This situation and no situation at all is ever too big for God to overcome. Three things I want us to remember is that God fights our battles. God possesses unimaginable power, power that we can't even fathom, that he uses for us. Nothing is impossible for God. When we face something that seems uh, confusing or impossible, uh, we need to turn to God and ask him for help and ask him for wisdom in those times because he has planned a victory in that battle for us. Number two, faith, not sight, is important. We need to have faith and know that God is going to help us. It doesn't matter if we can see the plan. We need to know the plan that God has given us is true and right. By human standards, the strategy that the Israelites used was not very, um, it wasn't a good plan. To them, if they, think, they, see, they thought that it wasn't a good plan. To march around the city and to shout, I mean, that just seems crazy. But God wanted to use it to see just how well their faith was. Last thing I want us to remember is obedience brings victory. When God gives us directions on how to accomplish something, we should follow it each and every step. We need to listen and obey to God's plans. Each step we take is a step towards victory. So today, before we close, I want to go back over and we're going to do just a little activity about how you can practice marching around the walls that surround you. Let's do it together. All right, so let's do an activity. Everyone get up off your, on your feet and let's do an activity here. Everyone stretch. Oh, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our trumpets that we made earlier and find a table in your house and we are going to march around it like the Israelites did, okay? So let's pretend it's the seventh day, okay? The seventh day was the last day that God commanded them to march around Jericho. And we're on our fifth time around. What are we going to do when we're done with our seventh time? Are we going to snore? No! We are going to shout and blow our trumpets, and God's going to make this wall fall down. So why don't you help me out? Let's all shout together when we march around the seventh time. Ready? So we're marching around. This is our fifth time. This is our sixth time. We're almost there. Last time around Jericho. Are you ready? Get your trumpets ready. And this is the seventh time. Blow your trumpet. <laughs> and shout to the Lord. Shout. The wall came tumbling down. And it wasn't through our power. It wasn't the Israelites marching around Jericho that did it. But it was God that brought that wall down. Today, I want to thank you for joining us on Kids Zone Online. 
Uh, next week we'll be doing the same thing here. So don't forget to share this video with your friends. Invite them to watch it so they can see well, the powerful plan that God has for them through this time. So let's look back at what our big idea is for today. The big idea for today is that we don't have to understand God's plan. We just need to obey it. God will bring us victory. So let's pray together as we close. Dear Lord, you are so great, powerful, and mighty. Thank you for fighting our battles and for leading us to your promises. Help us to obey and have faith in your plans. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. So don't forget to join us next week for Kids Own Online. See you later.